In suite 27, we're looking at multiplying and dividing numbers by 10. This is a nice place value strategy. Here's an example 37 by 10, and I'll use this to illustrate a couple of points. The most important thing that I think we should emphasize here is that it's not about adding zero or writing a zero or any such description. That is what it looks like. The notation looks like all you do is put a zero on the end. But of course, if we have harder numbers with decimal fractions, that strategy will break down immediately. And children in year four and five often get confused with decimal fractions because they've been taught all you have to do is put a zero on the end of a number. And, and then of course it doesn't work with a decimal fraction. So far better is to talk about places and values, the place value idea, so that we can emphasize what is happening mathematically rather than what does it look like symbolically. So 37 times 10, we're multiplying by 10, we've got two digits, we have 30 times 10, we have seven times 10. We need to talk about the fact that those digits will be in the answer, but they'll be in different places. So I'm gonna label this with an O, or I usually write the word actually, and a T for tens and an H for hundreds, and then talk about the individual places. Now it doesn't matter if we start on the left or the right with the mental strategy, um, so I'm actually going to start with the three. Three tens multiplied by ten. What is ten times ten? Of course, that's a hundred. So ten times three tens will be three hundred. So that's now in that place. And the seven one seven tens, seven times ten is seventy or seven tens. And then talk about the zero. It's not simply a matter of now write a zero. Why do we have a zero? It's called a placeholder because without the zero, ignoring the the column labels which aren't normally there in a number, that's simply 37 written in a different place. To force the seven to be positioned in the tens place and the three in the hundreds place, we need a digit here. It could be any digit that would do that, but in this case, we've got no other digits to play with. So it will be a zero to hold that place. Now we have zero ones and now we have seven tens and we have three hundreds. So, uh, so there's the answer. Let's have a look at dividing by 10. Now we're not making this too difficult. We're starting with a number of 10. So let's say 530 divided by 10 equals. Again, we have our labels, hundreds, tens, and ones. This time we're getting smaller. We're dividing it into smaller parts. If you have a hundred and take a tenth of it, linking back to our previous sweep, or divide it by 10, or divided into 10 equal pieces, of course they will be 10. So 500s divided by 10 will become five tens. Three tens will become three ones. There's no need to do anything else. The zero simply evaporates, there's nothing there. We're certainly not gonna add a decimal point and put a zero on the end. The answer is simply 53. So there's a lot of talking to do. You can also use base 10 materials. That's what we um, have pictures of in the Think Bubble resource that goes along with this suite. Um, we really need to help the students see the, the interconnections between the places. Now this strategy will be very useful for students in the future doing other maths. For example, in measurement, in the metric system, all our units are based on multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000, and sometimes 10,000. Understanding place value and what happens to a number when you multiply it or divide it by a power of 10 is an extremely useful strategy. These are only year three students, so this is, these are all nice, easy examples using only whole numbers and multiples of 10. But the principle will uh, persist. The principle persists into much more difficult numbers and much more difficult examples. I'll stop talking and I'll see you in the next video.